This month, we will examine the events of Holy Week through the perspective of servant leadership. To be a servant leader is to be a servant first. We see this clearly in the leadership of Jesus. And as we look to Jesus as the prime example of a servant leader, the event of Jesus washing the disciples' feet takes on a special importance. In John 13, we read, Jesus rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel, and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. Foot washing was usually the task of a slave in ancient times. In washing the feet of his disciples, Jesus shows us an amazing picture of God that he was willing to leave his exalted position in order to serve, even serving the one who would betray him. A servant leader humbles himself and looks first to the well-being of those he is leading, without prejudice or hesitation. Jesus' teaching on serving were translated into Greek using two words for serving, diakonos and doulos. The first word, diakonos, captures the idea of serving in humbleness for the benefit of others, as Jesus displayed with the foot washing. And the second word, doulos, expresses service grounded in obedience and self-denial. Not only does Jesus ask us to be humble ourselves, but he also calls us to be willing to surrender our own ideas and align ourselves to the mission of God. Jesus explained this aspect of servant leadership to his disciples after washing their feet, saying, A servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you, if you do them. Jesus did not ask more of his disciples than what he did himself. He was sent by his Father and submitted to his will by sacrificing himself on the cross. We are sent by Jesus. Can we sacrifice our own will and devote our lives to following his lead? Jesus' leadership was not about him. It was always about his Father and accomplishing his Father's will. Jesus could lead because he was led. He constantly sought the guidance and will of his Father through prayer. And most importantly, Jesus accepted this will with humility, as so clearly shown in the garden when he prayed, Not my will, but yours be done. How close is our connection to God? Do we recognize the direction in which he is leading us? Are we willing to go there? Furthermore, Jesus' servant leadership was also characterized by his dedication to building up his disciples. He emptied himself into others. Often our natural response, when in a leadership role, is to hold on to power and authority and not share it. Jesus constantly empowered others trusted them with leadership, allowed them to stumble and fall, only to build them up again. He shared all he had with them. Leadership that is shared generally results in growth in the individual person and in the congregation as a whole. As you serve and lead, who are you empowering and building up? As we come to the close of Jesus' meal with the disciples, he gives them one more lesson in servant leadership, which we can read in verses 34 and 35. Love one another, as I have loved you. By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Servant leadership is established in the love that Jesus has for us. Grounded in his love and example, 
we are equipped to serve first and thereby become leaders in the mission of God.